A wonderful Wednesday to you, dear saints. Wednesday, September 30th, the last day of the month, and a great day to talk about joy that Paul gives to us again in the book of Philippians. Before we get into that, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Well, if you're following along in the daily prayer, the daily lectionary or the treasury of daily prayer, today we are in Psalm 44. We are on September, the readings for September 11th. O God, we have heard with our ears, our fathers have told us, what deeds you performed in the days, in the days of old. You with your own hand drove out the nations, but them you planted. You afflicted the peoples, but them you set free. For not by their own sword did they win the land, nor did their own arm save them. But your right hand and your arm and the light of your face, for you delighted in them. You are my king, O God, ordain salvation for Jacob. Through you we push down our foes. Through your name we tread down those who rise up against us. For not in my bow do I trust, nor can my sword save me. But you have saved us from our foes and have put them to shame, those who hate us. In God we have boasted continually and we give thanks to your name forever. Do you hear the history there? That the, the nations have, the, not the nations as much as the families, have passed down the stories of how God has rescued his people and brought them into the promised land. It's so similar to what we do in Sunday school or Bible study or confirmation or even in your own homes when you just sit there and you tell your kids and your grandkids of the great biblical stories where God has triumphed and he has shown his might, and he has loved his people. Well, we'll see that a little bit more. St. Paul is going to bring us back to the fact that it's God who does the saving, and he's going to do it in a pretty graphic way, too. Philippians chapter 3, St. Paul writes this, Finally, my brothers, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same thing to you is no trouble. It's no trouble to me, for it is safe for you. Look out for the dogs, look out for the evildoers, look out for those who mutilate the flesh, for we are the circumcision who worshiped by the Spirit of God and glory in Christ Jesus and put no confidence in the flesh, though I myself have reason for confidence in the flesh also. If anyone else thinks he has reason for confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a prosecutor of the church, as to righteousness, under the law, blameless. But whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith, that I may know him and the power of the resurrection and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible... I may obtain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining toward what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those of us who are mature think this way. And if any, anything you think otherwise, 
God will reveal that also to you. Only let us hold true to what we have attained. Brothers, join in imitating me and keep your eyes on those who walk according to the example you have in us. For many of whom I have often told you and now tell you even with tears, walk as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is their destruction. Their God is their belly and their glory is their shame with minds set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly bodies to be like his glorious body by the power that enables him to to even subject all things to himself. Chapter 3, the book of Philippians. Well, you can hear it if you like Sunday school songs, if you remember these maybe from years ago. Rejoice in the Lord always, again I say rejoice, and then it would go in around as it went along. Paul starts off that way, finally my brothers rejoice in the Lord. And when Paul says finally my brothers, like he's beginning to sum up, remember he writes another two chapters. <laughs> Paul can't quite stop. Rejoice in the Lord always. There's that joy front and center in everything. And then Paul brings crystal clarity to why we have joy. He says, look out for the dogs. Look out for the evildoers. Look out for those who mutilate the flesh. Remember, dogs in his day, he's, he's referring to the dogs that eat and devour away at Christianity. But dogs in Paul's day were wild and they would devour anything. They would grab sick children. They would eat a dead body. They would do anything at all to get food so that they could survive. So watch out for the dogs. Watch out for the evildoers. Watch out for those who mutilate the flesh. And here again, Paul bringing us back to the hope of our salvation with crystal clarity. Those who mutilate the flesh, Paul is talking about those who will circumcise or be circumcised because that will impress God. It will be a sacrifice of their own flesh, and God will love them and give them salvation. We know better than that. Paul says, For we are the circumcision who worship by the Spirit of God in the glory of Christ Jesus, and put no confidence in the flesh. It is not circumcision that saves you. Paul is bringing that crystal clear That circumcision that the Jews said was a sign that you are uh, a child of God, if you will, uh, being a follower of the Hebrew God, Paul would say, no, it is not circumcision that does that. Circumcision is an outward act, an act that man does. Paul goes on to talk about a circumcision of the heart. This isn't heart surgery. This is God coming in and cutting away the old Adam, the old part of us that would kill us in the waters of baptism. God always does the saving. God always does the giving. God always does the faithing. God always does the repenting. We do not take confidence in those things. We cannot take credit for those things because they are a result of the faith that God has given to us. When we understand that, when we live each day knowing that every breath I take is a gift that God has given to me, and that He is pleased with me not because of what I did, but because of what Christ did, dying on the cross, forgiving my sins, and then covering me in righteousness, and God looks at you and me and all of His baptized, and He smiles. He's pleased with us because we're living in this faith that he gave to us. Put no confidence in the flesh, no confidence in any work I do, because everything I do is a result of the gift that God gave to me. Paul does brag here a little bit, a little bit he tries. He says this, if anyone else thinks they have confidence in the flesh, I have more. Paul isn't going to let anyone get over on him. Circumcised on the eighth day, that was the proper thing to do, remember. Jesus circumcised on the eighth day. The uh, eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, meaning that in Paul's family line, there were no deviations. Everyone was a Hebrew, a child of God. As to the law, a Pharisee, 
Well, we know what the Pharisees did. They believed that the law of Christ would, the law of Moses would save them. And they developed from these Ten Commandments a system of 600 and some more laws that they were confident they could keep. And because of that, Jesus then was a threat because he was undermining what they thought would save them. So a Hebrew of the Hebrews, a Pharisee, one that kept the law, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church. If you remember when God called St. Paul, he said, Paul, Paul, why are you persecuting me? As to righteousness under the law, blameless. You see, Paul's got a pretty good pedigree going on here, but listen to what he says next. But whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for Christ's sake. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. Paul is right on track here with where we should be as well. Paul sets everything else aside and faith in Christ is first and foremost because it's that faith in Christ. It is that identity in baptism that gives us the certainty to go on. Everything else in the world can change, does change, but our identity in Christ does not. And through that identity, we don't have to fear the things of the world, the things that are changing in our world around us. Paul goes on just a little bit later again reminding us that he doesn't have a righteousness of his own that comes from the law, but that which is through Christ Jesus. Paul is clear. Our Savior does the saving. Jesus does the justifying on the cross. He dies, he sheds his blood, and he covers us with that blood. His holiness given to us. We didn't take it. We didn't earn it. We don't go through life proving to God how worthy we are to be saved. Out of his great love for us, while we were still his enemies, God sent Jesus to love us through his death to give us life, through baptism to give us faith that we might cling to these promises that have been handed down to us through the generations. Today, dear child, on the last day of this month, cling to your baptismal identity and that promise of Christ, that he has saved you and forgiven you all your sins. In the name of Jesus, amen. Our creed for the day, again, our confession of faith, common Christian confession from the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Third commandment for today, for catechetical review. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not despise preaching and His Word, but hold it sacred and gladly hear and learn it. Our prayer for today is for a right knowledge of Christ. We pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, whom to know is everlasting life, grant us perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that following his steps we may steadfastly walk in the way that leads to eternal life through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. 
I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul for all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, dear saints, enjoy the last day of September. I'll visit with you tomorrow. Go in his peace.